What's up gamers, Aaron Shack here, and we have a build for you for Iron Man. Now this build, we're calling it the Plasma Laser Iron Man build, but it also contains plasma missiles as well as lots of particle damage that can be dealt out to enemies. So it's a very resourceful build, but we're going to be dealing lots of area of effect damage using Iron Man's various weapons built into his suit. Let's have a look. Alright gamers, let's take a look at Iron Man's skill tree. Let's make sure we understand sort of the primary move set that we use for Iron Man. Uh, with the light combo finisher, uh, we're just going to push square four times, which w with the current gear set that I'm using, light combo finishers uh, do pin particles as well as signature attacks. So light combo finisher, one, two three four and that last little uppercut there launch the enemy in the air a little bit and do some particle damage in my case so it launches enemies it increases with each hit holding square does the thruster uppercut which is a signature attack which you can then follow up with the power dive signature attack which sends you back down and of course you know with this perk unlocked here it increases the stun damage and reaction severity of the power dive and the area of effect is increased by 35 percent we also have a combo here of pressing square four times in midair which increases with every hit um, staggers the enemy and causes them to fly back so that one's that one's also going to deal some particle damage um, but so is this the thruster uppercut and then the slam and you can very quickly just kind of sort of spam these attacks and and deal lots of damage right and get that get that particle damage out there so those can be very powerful based on whatever your build is uh repulsors Really all we need to cover here is that, of course, there's a heavy combo finisher with repulsors. Uh, there's charging up the repulsor to do a repulsor blast. You have the slingshot, which you fire the repulsors after dodging. And then you have the repulsor strike, which is the heavy combo finisher, which is square three times and then triangle. So if we do this... That's his basic combo there. And then the heavy combo finisher. Like so. The dodge. Very powerful because he does two little blasts back to back. Just like that. But the current build that I'm working on. Yeah, you can also hold triangle. So to do a, a non-aimed charge up. You can just charge it up with triangle. A lot of people forget about that. A lot of people forget about that one. Um, the Muon shotgun is your is your sprinting attack with the repulsors. So sprint and then triangle. <clears throat> that one's very powerful. Now with the build that I'm using, uh, laser and missile attacks are dealing plasma damage. So I really love the lasers. So let's take a look at the lasers here. Um, this is all basic stuff. The energy lance is is the supercharged. You know, you're holding down R2 while you're aiming and just really burning up the enemy. And the the laser sort of supercharges up. Um, pressing triangle while dodging will have you slide forward and perform two laser slight swipes. And the cool thing about this is that this staggers everyone with, within a massive range here and does a lot of sun damage, which once again, kind of the way I play all my characters. I love to get takedowns, so I like to build up stun damage. So with lasers equipped, uh, triangle three times is the photon samurai combo there, which once again, that's going to do a high amount of stun damage there. And it doesn't use up much energy. And then holding triangle is the whirling tempest, which this is one of my favorite things to sp spam because it 
It breaks block, it does high stun damage, you know, causes enemies to spin. But yeah, it does cost quite a bit of your energy bar. Laser strike, you're, you're doing the same heavy combo finisher. It's the same sequence of buttons, no matter what weapon you have equipped. Um, it's square, 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 triangle, breaks block, high damage, uh, medium stun, stumbles the enemies, high energy cost. So we're going to look at these like in combat. But you can also do the laser scythe, which is triangle three times while in the air, which is very powerful. And you can hold triangle to just sort of fire both lasers simultaneously. This breaks block, high stun, knocks the enemies back, high energy cost. So we're switched to the lasers. Let's let's call in some basic enemies as, as sort of a, a showcase here of, of what's going on. So triangle three times, pretty powerful. Whirling Tempest, uh, that one's probably better showcased with more enemies. Uh, if we do the vertical one, Holding Triangle, I actually missed. That's, maybe I should get a little lower. There you go. Or the combo. Take this guy out, we get a new wave here, we'll do the Whirling Tempest. And then also, don't forget to press R2 here to counter enemies. You can. I'm holding R2 to put the shield out as well, but yeah, countering enemies like that is very powerful. Um, was there anything else we needed to showcase on the laser? Oh, that's right, the heavy combo finisher. Uh, square, 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 triangle. So once again, this is all you can see from the laser burn marks that, man, these are really powerful attacks that if I'm fighting lots of enemies, I'm trying to protect civilians and stuff like that, um, this is the way to go. Okay. So. Uh, looking at rockets, lastly, um, triangle is to quick fire a, a powerful rocket. Um, by holding L2 to aim and holding down R2, uh, you're able to like lock on to multiple enemies, which is really cool. It breaks block, it does high damage, it launches those enemies. Javelin holding triangle, you fire sticky rockets, these break block, deal high damage. Launch the enemy. Pretty good stuff. Then you have Rocket Strike, which is your heavy combo finisher. Sends them flying. Um, so it breaks block, high damage, fly back and knock back. Very helpful. Then you have Counter Fire. So after dodging, uh, you can press triangle to fire off some rockets. So let's showcase that since we're... Since we're... Uh, there's the the dodge that's holding triangle sending the enemies flying here now with the lock on holding down R2 then that's sort of a, a delay quick fire rocket be very useful if you don't have time to aim right Um, let's make sure. Oh, the rocket strike. We can definitely showcase that. And then that's the rocket that's going to send the enemies flying. Let's see if we can do it. Yeah, there it is. Sent that one dude flying. So you can see the rockets can be very powerful and obviously we have plasma damage being buffed here and being able to dodge quickly and then just sort of automatically firing with triangle like that, that can really dispatch the enemies quickly.
You can also get multiple shots on the same enemy if you want to do that. Especially for like big boss type enemies. So the missiles can be very powerful. So obviously this, this exotic piece of gear that I have here that's doing uh, plasma lasers which the lasers automatically, I should showcase this too, uh, because one of the difficult things uh, is defeating enemies during flight. The laser like automatically seeks out enemies. It's really cool. Um, with the rockets, you have to kind of hold R2 here. We'll do some multiple passes there. You can see that there's some red there were some red targets on, on the enemies there. It's kind of hard. This is... So I'll fire off a few, and obviously those lock-on rockets are going to hit a few of them. Okay, so let's, let's reset that so we can get back to... Talking about our gear here. Regards to our skills. Yeah, I think we've covered sort of all the basics here. So we'll move on to uh, talking about the specialty tree next. Hey gamers, if you're finding this video helpful or informative, please give us a like. Much appreciated. All right, this is where we kind of get into the nitty gritty here with Iron Man. Uh, pressing L1 overloads the arc reactor, emitting a massive pulse of electrical energy that constantly shocks nearby enemies and triggers an intrinsic overcharge state for 10 seconds. So what does that mean? Uh, intrinsic energy is, is what you use for your ranged attacks, right? So it's going to continuously allow you to just really use lots of ranged attacks so typically i i go all out with the lasers usually or rockets depending on uh where the enemies are and if i'm trying to deal like massive aoe damage obviously i i tend to prefer lasers um, but sometimes the rockets can deal massive damage and and spread explosions so while overcharged intrinsic energy is continuously filled all range attack damage is increased and attack speed is also enhanced that's very powerful, right? Uh, so now looking at our choices here, you have the EMP, uh, which triggers an electromagnetic pulse, which deals considerable stun damage. So typically, yeah, with with my type of build, stun damage is is really great. Um, and that's usually what I go for. But lately, I've been trying this. It does. It creates a one directional protective bubble that blocks incoming projectiles, but allows ranged attacks from inside the bubble to pass through, damaging enemies outside the arc field. So I kind of like this, because it gives me a chance to, like, really even the odds if I have a lot of ranged enemies hitting me, or or if I need to protect the team. This is the Titan bubble uh, from Destiny. You know, Titans would, would form the bubble, and the whole team would go hide in there. Um, that's definitely what that is. Uh, increase the duration of the overcharge rate by three seconds when activated by arc overload. So, I mean, that could be cool too, but obviously I think the stun damage is, is very powerful, and so is, so is the arc field, just depending on what, what you want. Uh, the EMP amplifier increases the range and intensity of the electromagnetic pulse shockwave by 30%. So... Obviously, it means you have to be using the EMP ability. That's highly recommended. Um, otherwise, it's kind of useless. This one here, frequently frequency modulations here reflect projectiles back at the enemy who launched them. So that can be cool because, you know, some dude will be shooting at you and his projectiles will just come back and hit him or, or one of his buddies. Um, energy burst instantly revives teammates. That, that can be useful if, if that's something something you need but honestly i've been going with this whole creating this defensive shield here with with the arc field and and defensive field all right with the assault heroic ability uh which is unleashing a torrential beam of energy drawn from the central rt node uh this is our assault heroic um 
Increases the charge rate of Unibeam. Unibeam deals 25% additional damage if it's triggered when overcharged. Definitely something to keep in mind. Um, increases the maximum Unibeam duration by 3 seconds, allowing for greater damage output. That's what I seem to like the most. But, you have other options here. Additional energy capacitors allow storage of up to 3 charges of the Unibeam. Heroic ability, but shorten the fire time to a quick burst. So, this breaks block. Medium damage, high impact, high stun, and knocks down the enemy. Now you have this one, the Omega Beam, which is it is where he uses the chest and the repulsors in, in just one massive combo. Uh, concentrated Beam that combines both repulsor and Unibeam firepower into a single massive energy blast deals a large amount of damage to everything in its path. Um, it breaks block, high damage, high impact, high stun, and the reaction is to fly back. So, whereas this one only does medium damage and knockdown, this, this thing really does some damage. But it's also pretty short, as you can see. I kind of wish this one had some length, or, or like maybe... Maybe while overcharged, it'd be really cool if it lengthened the blast. Okay, so now looking at the other side here. So that's all preference. I mean, it just depends. What do you like? I, I like having a lengthy unibeam where I can I can sort of just either blast one boss or, or one heavy, difficult enemy, you know, crack through someone's shields or something, or potentially kill a lot of weak enemies by just sort of spinning it around the room. Uh, it just depends what you want. So now, Unibeam deals more damage to a target the longer the blast is maintained on a single enemy. When using Reserve Capacitor skill, uh, each additional shot against the same target will deal 30% more damage. So this could be good, because that means you have three charges of this, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to deal more damage with, with each, each one, 30% more damage. So that can be very powerful but I just prefer usually like I said targeting a single target usually a high-powered enemy or boss like an adaptoid or something like uh, being able to really take out something that's a, a danger to the team uh, with this rapidly defeating three enemies with unibeam will overcharge the intrinsic supercharge ability so I'll overcharge this overcharge the intrinsic supercharge ability absolutely crazy um so that can be useful it, it just depends if your intrinsic bar is supercharged yeah well i mean it's doing that but it's like you, you have to make sure that you can kill three enemies i guess so that's that's a personal choice right there usually i'm just going after one enemy but this could be powerful as well uh, enemies defeated by Unibeam drop Heroic Orbs. That can be powerful too, but I'm getting Heroic Orbs from takedowns. Alright, so you have the Hulkbuster here. So, here's what's interesting. L1 and R1 to equip the Hulkbuster. If you hold L1 and R1, you can use the right stick to position and then release to remotely place the Hulkbuster somewhere. Once deployed, any strike team member can utilize the platform to equip the Hulkbuster armor. So yeah, you could potentially let uh, one of your other teammates uh, jump in the Hulkbuster and have full use of it. Uh, so the Hulkbuster uh, Unibeam is an option here. You can press R1 to unleash a torrential beam of energy drawn directly from the central RT node, breaks block. Um, everything else is kind of medium low and it staggers enemies. Uh, you can also emit a EM pulse that immobilizes all enemies. So that's high stun damage. That could be useful. What I've been using currently is the Magno missiles. They can target up to eight enemies. As long as you have that unlocked here. By default, it targets five. So now I've upped it to eight. Uh, you can also do a power beam, which is different from the unibeam. 
uh, the power beam is just holding L2 to aim and then hold R2 and you do like a short little laser blast. But it does a lot of damage and it staggers the enemy, it breaks block, it's, it's very powerful. Now, the hypercoils. Arc reactor improvements allow the Hulkbuster to be deployed for 10 more seconds. I think that's very useful. The more time you can be in the Hulkbuster, the more powerful you are, the less likely you are to get downed uh, if you're in a serious combat situation. Um... This next one here reduces intrinsic energy costs by 25% for actions or attacks while using Hulkbuster. So that could also potentially increase uh, how long you are in the Hulkbuster because obviously once you've depleted all the intrinsic energy, you really don't have much use to be in the Hulkbuster suit. Um, Hulkbuster melee attacks have a 50% chance to taunt nearby enemies, drawing their attention. So that can be powerful if, if that's something you want to do. Usually Cap and, and Hulk have uh, different moves that are taunting enemies. And if you choose to be Iron Man and, and do the same thing, you certainly can. Now, as I said earlier, don't forget about the energy shield. It's, it's great for uh, blocking projectiles and enemy attacks. Um, a lot of this other stuff, you have the thruster dodge here. So if you double tap circle, you'll you'll do the thruster dodge essentially to to dodge out a little further, which can be very powerful. Uh, of course, like a lot of other characters, you can vault over enemies by holding circle, which breaks block on the shield enemies. Um, this is energy shield is is basically your your parry attack here. Converts the energy into an energy pulse that hits all nearby enemies, breaks block, it's very powerful. Um, you saw me doing this earlier, holding R2 creates an energy barrier that blocks all incoming projectiles until it's destroyed. Uh, and those can come back fairly frequently. So while flying, that's the flight controls, I, I'm not really going to explain that. Um... Air dash, of course, you can double tap circle to do, uh, or you can press circle to dodge, but you can also, while you're sprint flying, you can do evasive rolls in different directions. After successfully parrying an attack, you can press triangle to perform a heavy combo finisher. This is actually really powerful. So, d it doesn't matter which, which one you have equipped. Whether it's the repulsor, the laser, or the rockets. So there you go. That's the specialty tree. Those are my recommendations. Um, but yeah, depending on what you're doing, if you want to get a bunch of takedowns while you're in Hulkbuster, you could potentially go with the EM Pulse. If you if you really want to do more <laughs> more Unibeams than than usual, then you can certainly do this one. But lately, I've been messing around with the missile barrage, and that's usually. A great last-ditch attempt for either dealing a lot of damage to the boss or wiping out a room full of enemies. So that's it. That's my recommendation there as far as the specialty skill tree goes. Hey gamers, if you're finding this video helpful or informative, please give us a like. Much appreciated. Alright, let's take a look at where things get tricky. The mastery tree. So looking at combat, uh, you can increase stun damage by 15%. You can boost critical attack damage done while air juggling opponents. Once again, I'm, I'm not very great at air juggling opponents, but it's kind of easy for Iron Man because you have the uppercut and the ground slam, and you can kind of just alternate between those. And of course, the light combo finisher is also an uppercut. So it's a little easier. Uh, increasing the damage of all combo finishers by 25%. Since I'm, I kind of like to play Iron Man. Initially, I, I definitely played him more as a melee character. And now you can see the build is, is short, sort of shifting into ranged at this point. So that's just preference. Uh, takedowns, I always choose uh, Heroic Orb because I like to regenerate my heroics quickly. But you could go for an Intrinsic Orb if you're... Like, like if you're really going for like a range build, you want to constantly be doing ranged attacks. You don't really care as much about heroics. You just want to be using your weapons at all times. Uh, this could be very powerful. 
uh increasing all range attack damage by 15 percent i've done that because i've i've found that useful no matter what i'm doing um you could also increase crit damage uh by 15 percent for all ranged attacks so depending on how we built the character this could potentially be really powerful as long as you make sure that you are focusing on critical spots of the enemy right uh 15 percent reduction to intrinsic energy meter cost for all range attacks and weapons usually i'm able to to regain that stuff so i'm i'm not worried about altering the reduction here so what we have here this is the repulsor attacks uh you could do increased critical attack damage for repulsors but once again the the current gear set i have is mostly lasers and missiles so let's focus on that increased stun damage for laser attacks by 20 percent that's a no-brainer i'm all for it uh increased damage for rocks rockets by 12 percent as as i said the the range tree here is definitely one that you will come in and you will change these perks up depending on what gear, gear you're using and if you're if if two of your gear pieces for example lasers and missiles here uh i i might want to equip some in in the missile category so moving forward increases the rate of fire for aimed repulsor attacks by 10 percent that could be powerful uh, reducing the intrinsic energy cost of using aim fire for the laser weapon by 10%. So while aiming the laser, I can reduce the cost. And since I'm using lasers all day long, um, I've been doing that. But this is really great. This adds a target guidance system to basic aimed rocket attacks. Now just to sort of showcase what that is, because it, it really is kind of important to, to highlight what a big change that is so yeah like it's it's locking on just as i'm aiming i'm not holding a button down right now if i can put some distance between these guys yeah it's automatically sort of locking on it's gonna really make aiming the rockets off the cuff like this a lot easier so i don't necessarily have to do the uh hold r2 thing So I, I usually use that a lot for Iron Man, and I guess I guess I should continue using that. Um, it's it's probably nice to have the reduced intrinsic energy cost, but this here cannot be undervalued sometimes. I, and since I'm using plasma rockets and plasma lasers, all right, moving on. Decreases intrinsic energy cost for repulsors. So if I was using repulsors a lot and I had a certain elemental power on them, I'd, I'd probably be using some of those perks. Or if you want to do a spread, you want to sort of do uh, one perk for each one, you, you could do that. Um, decreases in intrinsic energy cost of laser attacks by 10%. So I'm already getting that there. So, you know, it just, it, it really depends. You know, do I want it to be 20% or do I want to have the guidance system for the rockets uh decrease the intrinsic energy cost for rocket attacks which i think rockets are kind of expensive um but yeah that's just personal choice at that point uh looking at the intrinsic uh ability here we have increases the maximum amount of intrinsic supercharge energy by 15 percent so you could increase that uh that can be powerful the base regeneration speed of intrinsic energy by 10% can be great. Uh, increasing the intrinsic energy gain from dealing damage with light attacks by 16% per hit. So that can be good if you're dealing, uh, like I said, the, the light attacks, the light combo finisher, stuff like that. So that can be really powerful and that can allow you to get it back very quickly. So I, I think I chose that over increasing the bar itself or just allowing it to regen quicker uh perfect evade intrinsic boost instantly generate 15 points of intrinsic when performing a perfect evade that actually happens fairly common uh, that can be very powerful stunning an enemy instantly boosts intrinsic energy and since i'm stunning enemies all day long especially with my lasers i think that's a quick way to get even more intrinsic energy points Increased duration of the overcharge state by two seconds. 
that can be powerful but i mean if you're getting the overcharge state quickly by you know doing your your light attacks you're doing blocks and parries you're stunning enemies and stuff like that shouldn't be hard to do increased damage for all attacks while overcharged by 12.5 percent i think that's great uh 20 percent reduction damage from all attacks i i don't really need the extra shield but it, it could come in use depending on what your build's like Increasing the charge rate of all heroic meters while overcharged by 10%. That can be powerful as well, but I'm just really going for damage. When I'm overcharged, I'm going to be using my weapons, and I'm, I'm going to be wanting to deal a lot of damage with them. All right, for utility. Uh, you can reduce the cost of the energy shield by 15%, which means you, know, you could potentially use it more often. Uh, over here, grants 15 intrinsic energy points when parrying enemy attacks with the new energy pulse ability. So that requires the energy pulse uh, skill. Which once again, that's just your... Right as you're about to be hit, you just parry the attack with R2. So if that makes sense, um, that can be a quick way to really get some intrinsic energy. Um, adds shock damage to the energy pulse ability. I've been using that because that, that tends to like stun enemies and stuff. And occasionally I will get gear pieces uh, that do shock damage. I don't know if I have one right now. Yeah, sometimes you'll get one that's like... 20% to shock damage and boy just being able to do that with the energy shield uh energy pulse can be really powerful but uh this this might be something i, I might want to go back and forth between these two right here getting more intrinsic energy or having that shock so you can do even more stun damage after doing a parry uh all right, regenerates 5% per second of intrinsic energy of heroes near the energy barrier. So if everybody rallies behind the energy barrier, we can potentially regen some intrinsic energy. Uh, the reflective barrier here reflects the projectiles back. Um, that's what I've been using lately because that's the same, same thing I've been doing uh, with our support heroic ability. I, I've chosen to do the arc field in the defensive field so I'm blocking projectiles and I can shoot out projectiles uh, however I please all right with the next one here heroes near the energy barrier gain a 15% critical chance increase on all attacks so the only thing I don't get about this this sounds great but I don't think you can shoot through the energy barrier it's kind of just cover so if you were like Black Widow You'd have to be shooting at enemies that are not on the other side of the barrier, but maybe just like to the left or the right or behind us or something. I don't know. That that could be very situational. After burner, this is really cool if you want a speed boost, but it burns intrinsic energy. Um, double tapping circle while flying fires off flares that draw in the tracking projectiles and detonate other projectiles safely. Um, this can be really cool, but I, I just tend to learn to evade better. That way I don't have to use things like that because air superiority is so important. Increase the damage of range attacks while flying by 15%. So you've you've done that, and you've also increased all ranged attack damage by 15%. So I mean, that means while you're flying around like this and you're doing your laser beam, you're not even aiming at enemies because it's auto-locking on enemies. That's incredibly powerful. So that, that to me is a very powerful thing to go with. And it, it kind of easily beats these other two out. Unless, unless you just really, you're doing something where you really want to get around fast. <laughs> but yeah, those are my recommendations here. Uh, when it comes to Iron Man's build, you can just swap out those two depending on what you like. And then depending on uh, what type of gear you get for Iron Man, you might just uh, swap out some of these range specializations uh, based on what type of gear you like to use. But I am completely in love with lasers, and that's my favorite thing right now. Um, but I, I switch it up every now and then. 
So hopefully this has been helpful. That's Iron Man's mastery tree. All right, let's look at Iron Man's gear. Now, as we looked at it earlier, light combo finishers are doing pin particles. Signature attacks are dealing particle damage, which means the uppercut and the ground slam are doing that. I get 10 points of intrinsic energy when collecting heroic orbs, which I'm collecting those all the time because I'm stunning enemies with my lasers and my rockets or whatever. And then, of course, the, the signature attacks can also build up some stun damage as well, as well as the light combo finishers. All, all these things really lend well to how I like to play as Iron Man. Uh, there's different stuff, like, like certain gear pieces might drop 135% increased crit attack damage from Hulkbuster. That can be very powerful. Um, increased critical attack damage from all weapons can be great. Um, another one here, yeah, this one, increased damage from all weapons by 14%. Like, you, you can just kind of find some perks that are really cool. Now with this one, laser attacks deal plasma damage, missile attacks deal plasma damage, and then we've increased the amount of plasma damage dealt with any attack by 20%. That's ridiculous. Um, the gamma laser can be great, so I keep one of those handy. I got repulsors that deal cosmic damage. That's quite nice. Repulsors and lasers that deal vibranium. Uh, missile that does sonic. I'd, I'd love to see uh, lasers that deal sonic. Uh, repulsor that does gamma so I, I just keep around some other options but obviously this right here is just massively powerful here uh, so looking at the defense here uh, we have parrying an incoming attack uh, will activate a Jarvis barrier that's a 17.4 percent chance protects against 20 percent uh, maximum willpower 200% uh, increased willpower regen while overcharged so I really don't have to worry about health if I'm getting overcharged. Energy barrier will e electrocute nearby enemies. Okay, so actually that's a good, that's a good little little tweak that we made there. So the energy barrier will electrocute enemies, and I also had it to where the energy shield was electrocuting enemies, but I I can always switch that. Uh, if I can showcase that again. Yeah, the energy pulse. Uh, I can switch it from shock to just like, hey, I, I could get some extra intrinsic energy for, for getting a good parry done. All right. Uh, looking at other stuff here. Uh, increases the amount of willpower recovered from attacking cosmic afflicted enemies. This could be great uh, if I'm using cosmic stuff. And, of course, there's a, there's a cryo boost there as well. So, I mean, if I'm, if I'm sort of doing a battery thing where I'm using two different types of elements, like I'm using particle here, I'm using plasma here. You know, if I was using cryo there and I was using uh, the cosmic there, so I might actually actually just put a little lock on that because that, that cryo light signature attack there is, is actually pretty valuable here. But yeah, just seeing some different things, uh, increased willpower regeneration, energy barrier, um, this is actually the exact same. I don't know why this keeps happening sometimes, but yeah. Sometimes I'll get the exact same piece of gear, and we, we obviously don't need that one if it's not. Adding any sort of uh, statistical change here. 10% uh, of intrinsic energy when performing takedowns. That can be very powerful, so I've used that gear before. Getting that extra distance for evades, especially as Iron Man, can also be very powerful. So this, this is actually a really great gear piece. Um, this one here is stuck at 139, so I, I unfortunately that's, that's just not going to be very valuable because we, we won't be able to boost it to 140 because uh, it dropped low. Uh, this one here, I'm just holding on to it because it has some uh, perk to do with cloning labs, and we, we never got cloning labs. Uh, here's one that does Cosmic and Gamma. So that one's pretty nice as well. So I've been holding on to that. Um, oh, actually, this is this is the same thing, but this one here has a 17% increased melee and a 15% increased uh, ranged, whereas this one here increases the range by 20 and the heroic by 27. But we take a 30% hit to the uh, defense on on both of these. So yikes. 
So it all comes down to what trade-offs uh, do you feel comfortable making. Now, I haven't found an exotic yet uh, for Iron Man that I've liked. Um, but this one right here, this legendary, seems to be pretty good. 20% increase in all damage dealt in the Hulkbuster armor. Uh, charge rate for the Hulkbuster, 18% increase. Uh, three enemies defeated in rapid succession grants the defense buff. You know, there's just some other ones here that, you know, just have some interesting perks here and there. Increased range attack damage while overcharged. Like, that's that's pretty powerful because I'm already getting an increased range attack damage when I'm overcharged. And now we're just kind of stacking that onto it. That This this could actually be really powerful. Just that, just that one perk right there. Um, increased damage from consecutive mid-air melee hits. You know, support heroic ability. Takedowns grant willpower. Can be nice. Assault heroic grants willpower burst. You know. Critical hit chance for the signature attacks I'm dealing with particle damage. That that can be powerful as well. But as you can see, I've... Uh, and I always have something with particle, and that's why I've been really utilizing the Void, tre void Tech Transponder. I feel like it's... if Whether you get the signature, attack, signature attacks and light combo finishers and stuff, uh, or particle, or you get like a particle laser, either one could be incredibly powerful so that just depends um, but you could always switch this out for the tactagon which could potentially be uh, very powerful if you're dealing lots of elemental status damage which obviously with the with the plasma lasers and missiles being buffed so much I mean that that could just get ridiculous at some point so those are my gear recommendations. As as far as the artifacts go, uh, I just went with this one because it it buffs the ultimate. It it uh, increases the damage on the mid air melee combos, which you know you do spend a lot of time in mid air taking out the drones, flying around, doing strafing runs as Iron Man. Um, increased damage from signature attacks, of course, that's very powerful because that's that's a lot of what my build is built around. But anyway. That is uh, my recommendations on the gear for Iron Man. Um, there's obviously a lot of stuff that you can swap in and out. And this is an ever-evolving build here. It just kind of changes, you know. Maybe I don't always want to be dealing plasma damage. Or I might swap out uh, for the for the cryo here. Because that's got some neat, neat little perks there. I could do a cryo cosmic build, which would be really fun. So... Anyway, hopefully that was helpful. There's Iron Man's gear. Moving on. And that's all for this video. Hopefully you found it helpful or informative. If so, give us a like, and we'll see you on the next one.